All right, green, green, black scales. Um, the big question to answer, again, we played a bunch of mono green scales. That's definitely the more popular iteration. I'm a fan of the small black splash. So the big reason in my mind to have access to the black splash is Assassin's Trophy out of the sideboard. And one of the reasons for this is this is a deck that gets hosed by Stony Silence. So against any deck with white man in it, in the non-black uh, splash version, you basically need to board in all your nature's claims just because you generally can't beat a Stony. So what I like about this build is that Assassin's Trophy is a card that takes Stony Silence off the table, but it's not a dead draw when they don't have Stony. I'll, I've also fit wedged a couple of a few thought seizes into the main deck, which is a proactive way to take Stony Silences away from our opponent before they happen, but it's still live even when our opponent doesn't have the thought seize or doesn't have the Stony. So I think it's a little bit of flexibility. It only adds a little bit of consistency. One of the one of the things you give up to to play black is you'll notice this build has less horizon canopies and no land war reborns as a card that some of the other builds play. But overall, I was a fan of the black splash last time we played it, and let's uh, let's run it through another link here now. Tino, thank you for the 16 months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Can that last 50 go towards adding two dealer choice modern in the queue? Definitely full metal. 10 out of 10. Thanks for the support. Smells like smells like Death Shadow. The old welding jar here to protect the steel overseer. Teamer, Teamer Battle Rage is their single best card in this matchup. So let's them trample over our blockers. Walking Ballista is one of our better cards in the matchup, as someone in chat just pointed out. Oh, they don't have another land. That's good for us. No blocks here. Yikes. That was, uh, I think that was actually the best draw on our deck. Maybe, maybe Mox Opal was marginally, a marginally better draw than that one, but that was, uh, that was a pretty good draw. Oh, huh. You know what? Am I supposed to have played Walking Ballista there? Maybe I'm supposed to play Walking Ballista there. Min Max, thanks for the four month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me here. Right, so looking looking to fade teamer battle rage. Feel like feels like that's always the spot we're in. Looking to fade teamer battle rage. Um huh. I think I leap push hanger back walker up. So I can I can play leap, sack activate hanger back walker, sack hanger back walker to leap. And then steal overseer, put counters on all the one ones. I can also play the walking ballista out here and like get that going. The hanger back walker does just like trade with Gurmag Angler here. Leap, leap gives me a bunch of blockers. 
and it gives me some grind value. Now I think I think I'm in a position that I can beat Teamer Battle Rage. So I think I think I'm gonna play around Teamer Battle Rage. They don't they don't find a way to gain deal make their death shadows bigger. Is it nuts to just full trade off here? They have a, I have a couple decisions. I could like I could like double double block these. I could triple block across and then next turn I can play walking ballista activate and arcbound ravager and activate and then kill them. I think I just block straight across here cuz then I'm not dead to teamer battle rage and then I have lethal on the backswing. I think I just do this. They, they agree. Someone asked about Evolutionary Leap. Evolutionary Leap is fine. Um, I think you want a minimum of six ways to sacrifice your Hanger Back Walker. Like that game just showed is very good. Um, and I think that Evolutionary Leap single-handedly wins certain matches. Like... Uh, uh, what's it called? It's Evolutionary Leap single-handedly like beats like blue-white control a lot of the time. It's one of the few cards that can help you like power through a stony silence on occasion. I think I'm gonna cut the throne of Geth and the three thought seizes. Sure, but that's like an unlikely combination of things that I'm not gonna play around. So like you should talk about things you can actually beat and things you can play around, and then play around the maximum number of things that still give you a good chance to kill them the following turn. So you are correct that they could have had a combination of cards to win the game there, but I was only worried about beating a single 10 teamer battle rage. Well, they're diff they're different decks, Duel Josh. Like I get that they're both Arcbound Ravager decks, but Affinity, traditional Affinity, and this are both fine decks. I also don't really care for I didn't care for Experimental Frenzy and traditional Affinity, so I don't think I'd play that card in it. And that's and that's a very common comparison what you did there to compare this deck to traditional Affinity. I get I get that there's a lot of overlapping cards in it, but I think that comparison is not. Uh, not a good one to make. I'm gonna bend the dark steel citadel. I could bottom the land war. I think I want the flexibility to cycle my last land. I don't have any black spells in my hand. I'm gonna bottom this and then be sad when I draw a black land, a black spell, but I think it's right to push that. There's only four black spells in my deck, and like I have more black sources I could draw to. And like even if I draw a black spell, like the rest of my hand is reasonable, I don't have to cast it right away. They take my hardened scales, and then next turn they cast another discard spell and take some more things, and I'm really sad. But again, second hanger back walker's nice because it means I get to cast one next turn unless they have two discard spells. Uh uh uh. Yeah, I'm a big I'm a big fan of four mana Karn in uh I guess I have to specifically say Cyan of Verse, because we have two four mana Karns now with war. Yeah, Cyan Cyan of Verse is pretty reasonable in affinity. Definitely want to play Hanger Back Walker here. They don't know that I drew a second one, so they might be inclined to kill this first one. And if they don't kill this, it allows me to pay one mana to activate it next turn, plus play a two drop out, which is great. Yep. 
And then I have to decide, like, which of my which of my creatures do I do I care about the least next turn, so I don't care if it dies. So here's a fish. Mox Opal is great, because it means I can deploy two things here. It could also mean I could just deploy Hangboy for two. But I think I think I'd rather just go thing thing. Ever since I started watching Jeff, my phrase, my usage of the phrase seems reasonable has gone up 500%. God bless. Uh, no blocks here. Definitely, like, my creatures are valuable. I probably should have attacked them for one last turn. To give them a little love tap, potentially. Uh, subs get to add decks to my deck queue for a much lower price. You can check out the details on how to submit a deck on my website there. All right. If they have nothing, I think they're dead. Arc, arc bound ravager hanger back walker walking ballista usually means they're dead all right time to do math and see if they're actually dead um this is two three four five six seven eight nine ten. Can only deal 10 here, right? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I could do 11. All right, I guess we're picking our stuff up. This is, this is actually the reason. So like, this is one of my decks that I enjoy playing the most right now. But this deck's a lot like Dredge in that there's a lot of these games, especially post-board, where like, you don't decide if you beat them. They decide if they want to beat you. Because of things like Hercules Recall and stuff like that. There's just games that you just like. Lose that are just completely outside of your control. Because they, they hit their sideboard cards. They might, they might just want to take Mox Opal here, honestly. Just like slow me down. Nice vortex. All right, so I'm going to leave myself dead, do another counter spell here, and just play this for four. I can't really afford to play around stuff at this point. Like, obviously, I could beat another rejection. I could not die to another rejection, but I don't think we're beating another rejection. Onward, upward, backward, forward. To the next one. I'm happy with how I'm boarded. I'm going to cut these fatal pushes on the play. I'm going to bring in Karn in the animation module. Just like linear a little harder. Should I get Chipotle or not? The answer to that question is always easy. Of course you should get Chipotle. Chip bottle, chip bottle. This, this hand's really good. Do 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 do. Have we played Shadow versus Band? I don't think so yet, Seth. 
This doesn't sound familiar. I have to imagine, like, we have, like, the Eldrazi deck has big guys, and it has path, and it has, um... The Eldrazi deck has big guys, path, and uh, explosives. It's gotta be okay. Thrag Tusk is really good out of the sideboard as well. Hey, Juicy Jace. Thanks for the Prime support. I appreciate you shipping your Basil Bucks this way this month. Hope you're having a fantastic start to your week. Happy Monday. You've never had a problem from which side, Flight Forward? Uh, yeah, this is, this is match one with this deck over. I'm running, I'm running late tonight. Yep, yeah, yeah, last deck of the day. I've been live for eight and a half hours, so we'll probably be pushing, be pushing ten by the time I'm done. Uh, we're in no danger of running out, Dober. The reason, the reason why I'm running late today is we had three people send in very large donations to cut in three new decks. So, not in, not in any danger of running out. And I'm taking Wednesday off because Moto's down. Moto, Moto is offline until, uh, until like two o'clock central on, on Wednesday. We have gone Citadel. God, holy crap, you're right. Yeah, you're super right. Eight. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, I miss I didn't I didn't count that correctly. I totally could have gone Citadel into module into Opal Scales. And like module is a very good card in this matchup, so like having that out there would be a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and move along here. We're pretty done at this point. They picked us apart. Just couldn't, couldn't beat Recall. Game two. I think even if we had hit Animation Module, we're probably still pretty far behind here. We didn't have anything, anything going on to be putting counters on. How are we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody, wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for dropping in here today. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, 50 hours a week. If you enjoy Constructed Magic, this is definitely a channel for you. We play Modern, Legacy, and Standard as well, though we're holding off on Standard until the new set releases later this week. Um, as always, I'd like to give a shout-out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here Dan and out without their wonderful support, so thanks to all of them for keeping me employed. If you're one of the many people in the world who has Amazon Prime, that gets you Twitch Prime included with that for free if you link your Amazon and your Twitch accounts. And Twitch Prime gives you a free channel subscription every single month to a channel of your choice here on Twitch. You can use that to support my own content so you can uh, message and chat or any of the other wonderful content creators that are out there. So if you have that, make sure you use it every month. Um, I'd also like to plug a couple of my sponsors here really quick. CoolStuffInc.com. Buy and sell a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles using promo code Jeff5. You can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, Warhammer, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. Inkgaming.com will love Jeff because customize your gaming experience using code Jeff12. You can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose from the right range of artwork that they have on their website. And of course, Cardsphere.com will love to help you turn your cards and other cards directly to the players. There's no haggling, and they just take a 1% fee off the top. Whoa, that's the wrong scene. Still waiting for the Moto Q to fire. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes. Perfect time to shill. Less than, less than 90 seconds shill, because that's how long we've been in the queue. 
Do 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 Stingy! Thanks for the half year, I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Hope you're having a fantastical start to your week. That seems fine. Not amazing, but fine. What you got? Enchant a creature an opponent controls. When enchanted creature dies, exile cards equal to its power from the top of its owner's library. You may cast non-land cards from among them for as long as it remains exiled. Ganti, hostage taker, fatal push. Ah. Uh. Uh, yeah, Mr. Steal Your Girl. That's it's like Mono Mono takes our cards. Let him keep them. What do we? Is it? I think it's Phyrexian Arena or Hostage Taker. I bet there's Thieves of Sanity in their deck. Yeah, I bet. I'd bet a good amount. Most of these cards are probably going to be legal in the new non rotating format. I take hostage shaker. So, I'm going to play this to start. Play Hanger Back Walker. We have three lands here, so that means next turn we can play a two-mana thing plus activate our Hanger Back Walker. Thoughts need this stuff to resolve when you're not sure what everything's going on. Why, why is this the way it is? So like, do they want to let me make this bigger so the dead man's chest is better? Or do they want me to have less thopters? Yeah, I'm not I'm not even sure we do, Steric. Like, I'm not sure it's super relevant. Like, a lot of the cards in our deck are like kind of low power synergy cards. So it's like is is this really relevant? Not really, I don't think. I 
I hope they steal enough to ravage your ballistic combo. Oh, that's rude. Uh, I took their hostage taker. If I, if I left them with hostage taker, I would have played the throne. But I, I took the hostage taker because I didn't have the throne at the time. Maybe this is you checking in for the fourth month. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. So... I'm just going to power these up. I'll be running late a good bit later this week, too. Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll be starting late. Well, Thursday, I won't be starting late, but I'll be running late. Friday, Friday, Saturday, I'm planning not to start till noon because the Mythic Championship's going on. And I want to overlap the whole thing. I would like the record to reflect I top eight of the week with the standard open with four of these in my deck the first week it was legal. Thank you very much. People saying this card wasn't playable. Get out of here. Hey, Steve, thanks for the five months. Welcome back. I appreciate you keeping me employed here. All right, Arcbound Ravager. You know, I haven't really looked at the new set from a modern perspective. Are they dead? I 
They gotta be pretty close to dead, right? So I'm gonna tick these three up. And I'm gonna play... Oh, now they're definitely dead. I think they were dead before this, but they're definitely dead now. Pretty, pretty confident they were dead before. They are certainly, certainly dead now. Oh, I could have sacrificed this to itself, right? I always forget this can sacrifice to itself. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So I, I was inefficient and missed some counters here. But they're, they're dead to walking, Ballista. Put them to one, let them die to underprexion arena. <laughs> I mean that's only the that's the polite thing to do, right? Like let them let them go out of the world drawing cards. And I haven't had anyone make me make me click through killing them from double digits with Ballista in a while. <laughs> it's a weird it's a weird card to play when you're at one life opponent. Strange. Strange. All right, Pithing Needle animation module here for the grind. Um, I guess I guess Fatal Push and Assassin's Trophy technically kill Hostage Taker. That's not super descriptive. I'm not sure. I'd have to I'd have to see a deck list Astrominator. Yeah, maybe Thoughtseize comes out. Their cards are confusing and hard to take anyways. Eh. I think our, our plan of just be proactive through whatever it is they're doing is probably fine. Honestly, it might be wrong to board in trophy just because I don't want them to cast it against us. I could see could see that being real. Put a mulligan to five. The wildfire build. Yeah, that would probably be fine. Remember that one being okay? That deck's probably less bad than when. When KCI was legal, that deck had... There was a lot of extra artifact hate floating around. Yeah, I think I like Overseer Pike. Someone someone posted the list of the, the Grand Prix that, like, top-aided without it. 
I don't know. I get the... I would understand the idea of cutting steel overseer if your deck wasn't full of things that need to be killed, but like this deck is just like mono things that people need to kill. So I'm not quite sure I understand like cutting a good card just because it dies sometimes. I don't think this deck's blue white control matchup is that bad and i think with the black splash it's better Yeah, if you wanted to get it in tomorrow, you just need to beat whatever's at the top of the queue, Destrominator. Keep in, keep in mind that I didn't get everything played today that we got played. So Grishel Brand and Black Red Prison are at 63 and 60 points. So those will, those will stay in the queue because I didn't get to them today. How did elves go? Great, we 5 would the first, the first, like, I think it was the three or maybe even four matches were just, like, super easy, just, like, hot knife through butter. Yeah, main deck dismembers fine. The the two scoos and the two lead the slam feed slots are kind of like dealer's choice flex slots in the in the elf deck. Hedge hedge the matches you want to hedge basically. See, it's pretty good. I think I want a thought seize on one here. They don't have red mana at the moment. I think I just take meddling mage. I'm gonna play out this welding jar in case they draw Thalia. Every, every time. Never, never not on top. Next turn, I think I'm going to go... Depends on what they do here, obviously. I think if they just play champion and pass, I'm going to go Ballista, Worker, Sack, Worker, Modular, the counter onto Ballista, shoot the, champ shoot the champion. There also might be Merit just killing the Noble Hire because they're a little bit choked on mana. What do we, what do we think about that? 
I don't think I hate that, actually. We're definitely we're definitely killing something here. What do we think about kill champion versus kill mobile? Hey, what's going on, John? Hey, catch us uh, almost done. This is match three of the last league. They have planes and then two cards I don't know in their hand. Yeah, I, I kind of want to keep them from double spelling. Reflector Mage, yep. Let's see what they target here. I think I'm just going to shoot the champion in response. Just keep him off my back. That's a good rip. Steel Overseer, huh? That's a pretty good one. Take scales, right? Yeah, I, I could have played the Walking Ballista, but I think I'd rather... I think I'd rather get the Overseer down. Cycling this is very good for me. They could meddling mage me, right? If they meddling mage, I'm in a kind of a bad spot. This does not play Winding Constrictor. Welcome to the jungle, baby. Hmm. candy. I could have activated my ink moth to put counters on it, but I'd much rather just stay at four because the difference between three and four is one mantis rider hit, which is an important difference, I think. Rather, rather like we're pretty far ahead, so I'd rather like not be forced to make bad plays if they rip a thing. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Opponent. Opponent coming to the their dead their dead conclusion. Got it. Get it, got it good. This is a easy thought seize out, fatal push, assassin's trophy in matchup. Trim a throne of Geth. Not sure about welding jar. It's like okay. It helps you trade in combat sometimes, but like they usually don't have many destroy effects in their deck. Got a bunch of deck submissions on the form. Sounds sweet. We had a couple of people through modern decks. So Hopefully, had some good standard. Yeah, I, I guess Leap's a little slow. Yeah, maybe maybe Leap's better as animation module or the second molding jar. Results. All right. Well, they uh, they discarded a card. They played a, a two mana one two flyer. 
Things are things are looking okay for Team Hoagland. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, you think they thought it stopped these? That would make sense. So I definitely want a walking ballista because this will come in as a 2 2 and I can shoot the Thalia's lieutenant. It also it also gets um it also gets walking ballista into play, so I can't get meddling maged off of it, which is nice. Uh, is that lethal? Ravager comes into play and makes a 1-1. One, one. Um, this will have two counters on it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or sorry. So this comes up and play with two. I think it... I'm pretty sure this is lethal. So this comes into play with two counters on it. And this is four, six, eight... 10, 12. It's super lethal. Like, this is like the most lethal. Listen, scales, walking ballista, arc bound ravager. Is it lethal? The answer is basically always yes. The answer, the answer is basically always yes. Never, never not yes. Even, even without them being dark, it's lethal without these being citadels. Because this would put nine counters on here, which would make it a ten. Which then shoots this, and then it hits them plus blasts them. So, even without the citadels, it's lethal. With the citadels, it's super lethal. Because we get to attack too, right? Rikachu, thank you very much for the 12 months of support. I really appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Have a sword to go with your shield. Thanks for keeping me employed here. All right, onward, upward, backward, forward. Quick glass leak, thank goodness. I am, my batteries, my batteries are running low, chip. We just crossed the nine hour mark. Let's try and run our way out of this, this league with a little bit of self-respect. That's the end's more than good. It's great. Thought season to Overseer. Let's do it. Oh. That last turn there where we like counted out, is it lethal? That That's why we call this deck a competitive math test. It's like counting, counting. Opponent mulligan to four. What are you playing? Tron, so you deserve this is what you're saying. What you're saying what you're saying to me is you mulligan to four, but you deserved what you got. Alright, let's get linear, linear. We want to be linear. Let's get into linear. Do 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 do. I think I hold off on that till next turn. Just get Steely, Steely Dan going here. How do you get back there? Uh, to get back into the Discord, if you fall out from uh, being unsubbed, you just need to go back to your Connections tab on your desktop app. So go to 
Go to settings connections on the desktop version of Discord and you'll see the server there. Why are they not activating their map? Do I have lethal next turn? I think, I think I'm short. <laughs> All right. Do, 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 do. Elves and hardened scales were such perfect decks to play at the end of a long day. Just, just, just dumpster them. Running them down, running them down. All right, leap out. Animation module out. Throwing a geth out. I think I want Thought Season trophy. Trophy, trophy might be slow even. This might be this might be too much interaction. Three damping spheres, a trophy, and three thought seas. That's probably plenty, right? Almost felt bad watching that, but then they were playing Tron. Do 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 do, be do 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 do. Yeah, I could see zero trophy being correct. I could see I could see a world where zero trophy is correct. Sounds great. Tron, tr Tron, Tron, Tron. Do 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 do. do. What's your favorite song by Olivia Newton-Tron? So it feels a little bit bad that I have to Damping Sphere on two and can't just like do my stuff, but definitely can't give them a turn with Tron without, uh, I don't think, just can't give them a, a turn with, with full Tron. The upside to having Trophy in my deck is that it does, it would kill, it would kill Oblivion Stone, which is a real, a real thing. Oh, all right, sure. Yeah, let's just... I was, I was about to say we can't double spell this turn, but then we drew another hard scale, so you know. All bets are off. Are they dead next turn? It's Arcbound. It's Arcbound Ravager lethal next turn. I feel like I feel like there's a chance it is. It's probably not, so it's going to be 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's, it's real close. If I draw a Darksteel Citadel, I think it's lethal... Yikes, we're dead. Yikes. I think I just Ballista Murder Karn, right? I'm just like, hope they have Worm Coils and stuff from here. If they have like more Karns and O-Stones, we're probably dead. I deserve that. Maybe maybe I'm just supposed to jam both of them there. Right on 
Right on time, thought sees. <laughs> All right. All right. I guess I was surviving two attacks from this. So maybe I'm supposed to, like, take a hit. I guess that's not the card I'm drawing either, technically, because they're going to, like, exile 20 cards off the top of my deck. I'll leave one trophy into the play. It's probably fine. You want me to bring in Pithing Needle? I guess. Yeah, maybe that's better than Trophy. It tags O-Stone and Karn. Maybe that's better. I don't know that I'm excited about this, but it's definitely not a mulligan. Uh, Ugin. Ugin's not relevant in this matchup. Ugin, Ugin shouldn't be in their deck. Hopefully Damping Sphere is fast enough on the play. We have two of our three cards that kill them. Maybe I'm supposed to lead on Walking Ballista. I think I'd rather Walking Ballista die than Darkbound Ravager die. So this turn is this into Damping Sphere, attack for one. They've, they've been quick, Tauber. We've been we've been getting slaughtering and getting slaughtered. I think this is match four already. Yeah, this is match four. We're two and one. Let's read. Hardened scales. I didn't sack it. Oh, did I miss lethal? I might have missed lethal because I didn't sack that. We're gonna be close. Sorry, Chad, I've been up for nine hours. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I'm just hoping to not get Oblivion Stone next turn. Maybe I'm supposed to leave... Maybe I'm supposed to leave a mana up, so that way if they Oblivion Stone me, I can put things on the Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah, that's the line. I should... Yeah, I should leave... I should play Arcbound Worker. I should play Hanger Back as a 1-1. If I had done that, would I have had lethal next turn? If I had done that, would I have had lethal next turn? So this would have been... This would have been uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. No, I'd have been one short.
So we had we had Sphere two games in a row. They had Claim two games in a row. Yep. Weird sequencing on their part. They have Spatial for the Ink Moth. That sucks. Oh, that's aggressive. Sequencing on their plays was really weird. Which is a little bit suboptimal. I'm also not playing it 100% though, so can't really judge them. I missed a counter on my Arcbound Ravager when they when they claimed it. Although I guess it gave me four life. Probably still a mistake though. I'm gonna animate this and put the Arcbound token onto it. They're, they're gaining a bunch of life every time this attacks, so I want to go on the infect plan for sure. They spent the spatial last turn, Tom. They used they used the spatial right away on a Thopter token. That's why I mentioned I felt their sequencing was weird. We drew the hate card. Tron can't win anymore, right? That's how that works. Uh, mostly Assassin's Trophy. Assassin's Trophy and Thoughtseize allow you to interact with cards. Assassin's Trophy and Thoughtseize allow you to interact with cards like um, Stony Silence without having to have narrow cards like Nature's Claim that only answer Stony Silence. Just going to go ahead and move along to the last one here. We're two and two. A basic lands. Thanks for the four months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hey, Robinson. Thanks for calling out a sub gifty. You're having a good start to your week. Uh, we five owed. Uh, we five owed with Jeskai, and we five owed with Elves, and we probably would have five owed with Bant Eldrazi if I hadn't made a really terrible attack in Game Three of the last match. So overall, good run today. We got one more here to try and get out with the three two and an extra treasure chest team. Yeah, I was going to say, like, of all days, there's often days where we don't hit any 5 O's, but, like, today was definitely not one of them. Yeah, yeah, Bantel Drazi is actually, uh, I added Bantel Drazi and Grixis Shadow to the modern sections on my website over the weekend. We played a third league with Bantel Drazi again today. The deck's, deck's been really good when we've played it. I'm going to make a couple of edits to the build on my site after playing it again today. Oh, I'm really not looking forward to slogging this out. This deck has a hard time grinding. Maybe, maybe the, maybe the person that top aided the event with no steel overseers and a bunch of animation modules has the right idea. Animation modules is really good. At, one of the best cards this deck has for grinding. So I could, I could see, could see the appeal of playing that card and not playing steel overseer. Storm is three. Hanger back walker. Go. What are we doing, opponent? I'd rather just do this than uh, throw in a Gethir. 
I don't really have a lot of things to be proliferating. Steel Overseer's kind of nice. For the linear match? I mean, most, most, m most of modern is the linear matchups. I think I'd, I think I'd rather, would rather do the inverse. Like, if I'd, I'd rather board the Overseers out than board them in. Now, you have plenty of good ways to trigger module, Tom. And, and module triggers itself, too. Like, module lets you pay three mana to put a counter on something. So, like, it's, it's self-enabling, too, if you have anything in play. Sounds good, Destrominator. A lot. You probably won't get an email back till late tonight. Because I've been, I've been running for a long time today. So I'm going to do the bare minimum to get stuff posted to YouTube. And then probably like eat dinner and take a shower. That's the anguish I'm making. And only welding jars just sitting over here on the side looking like a, I'm trying to, I'm doing my best here, boss. I just got, I got so many things I can't do nothing about. Poor little, poor little welding jar. Just doing its best with what it can. Trying to get behind this big, cruel Esper world. I don't know what you are referring to, Voodoo. Alright, well, their Jace is dead. I think labeling decks as easy or hard to play is largely a masturbatory exercise that's largely designed to make certain people feel smart about the decks that they're playing or make other people feel dumb about the decks that they're choosing to play. Different people find different things easy and difficult to do. So saying that something is objectively hard or objectively easy isn't something you can really do. I think, I think there were a lot of articles and like clickbait basically of people talking about things that were easy and hard because well, it was easy content to make and people really wanted to click on it. So it was like good clickbait for people to make up. So I think I pay four, put a counter on this and then Throne of Geth, put a counter on this and then kill the Jace. I think is the line. They're down to two cards. I'm doing all right, Remicide. Hey, Ven Faith, thanks for the three months. Welcome back. He won't be sculpting any more mines. We know they likely don't have any one mana piece of removal because they would have saved Jace there. We're just barely Squid Squad. That's what, that's what three cut the lines will do. We'll end up, end up running real late. I think we're going to get a regular all day modern day in. Just so people aren't super starved for. So, so all the cut the lines don't get pent up again. Like to spread them out. Because only with only doing one modern deck per day, there hasn't been room for people to be able to cut in. It 
definitely not Mondays. Mondays Mondays is one of my highest viewed days while playing standard, so. I don't uh I don't plan to change Mondays to standard. Probably Tuesday or Thursday. Tuesday and Thursdays, historically speaking, are my my least viewed days. Well, I was really excited about that draw. I was like, well, we might have a shot here because these cards are really good. And then Esper Charm happened. Draw, draw step mind rot is a hell of a drug. Yikes. All right, so we need to like... Find another, uh, I can save that. We need to find another hanger back walker here. If we find, if we find a hang boy, he destroys almost all these spirits, right? Oh, the welding jaw has fulfilled its potential. It is loved. It is loved. That, that's actually like an okay rip. Like obviously not great, but it like blocks the spirit token, I guess. It means if they attack with everything and I draw Arcbound Ravager, we might have lethal. This deck definitely has a problem with the with the attrition matchups. This deck has like it just has kind of low average card quality, which means that when it gets into matchups like this where it's kind of getting picked apart by interaction, it has a has a hard time keeping up. Why not end step real free there? Because I missed it. It didn't matter. They had a cryptic command. So I was mentally checked out because we were dead. We were dead when the Esper Charm happened. They should have conceded. Maybe I don't want this. I guess they don't have they don't have that many things that actually like kill my stuff. I'm not sure one of these is for the seal overseer. Instead of the Oh, no, no. Already submitted? Yep. All right. Um. Yeah, okay. You get to go zero, zero, arc bound worker, cast thought sees. Hey, Adam Gardner. Thanks for the 14 months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Uh, something close to the opponent's deck top aided uh, the last modern open inner. As greedy as all get out to. Had like Field of Rune and uh, I guess I guess we take Sony's line. So I had Field of Rune um, and Esper Charm and Cryptic Command in it. Maybe I'm supposed to take EE there and just hope they miss. Hey, no worries, Adam. Good to have you around. Hope life's going well for you. So that'll be popping off next turn. Um...
They drew Opt. That's pretty good. They're missing a land. They bought him. They're missing a white source, I guess I should say. They have Drowned Catacomb. Alright, welding, welding. I almost I almost tried to cut welding jar, and welding jar is just like, listen, Jeff, I'm gonna show you why you shouldn't cut me. This doesn't hit a green source, I get a little bit punished here. I think it's right to gamble. Hardened scales. Activate, activate, hit you for three. There's Field of Rune, which lets them get their planes and deal with my Ink Moth. They drew a path. <laughs> yeah. Tough, tough end of the day. That's a good hit. They're like close ish to dead here. This is two, so this puts six counters on here. Because it's two and then two makes six, seven, eight. So this is ten. So this could put eleven counters here. I could hit them to two this turn. And even for people that don't follow what I'm counting there, every Ravager activation is two counters because of Hardened Scales. Hanger Backwalker is worth three Ravager activations with the two tokens that it makes. So that's six counters total. And then Mox Opal is two. Arcbound Ravager already has two, so that's ten total. And he moves over an extra one, so he does a total of eleven. And he slides on over. He might actually be dead here. <sighs> If they didn't, if they didn't draw another path, their hand is Mana Leak, Anguish, and Making Terminus, and then one card I don't know. If they didn't draw another path, they should be dead. That lethal, please tell me that's lethal. That's lethal, right? God, God bless us, everyone. <laughs> oh, the, the opponent has died. <laughs> Cries in math. All right, all right, scoreboard. Let's go to the game three. Game the third. All right, Welding Jar, you've earned your place at the table. You can stay. I'm gonna click some bit. I'm gonna click some bit. Thanks everybody for hanging out through the ads. Late stream for me. Super late for modern. Our numbers were all right today. I think we we broke a thousand at one point. I think I think relics too slow. I think I'd rather just have things that like attack them. It also went to six. That's nice. Sure. Oh, I, I didn't board in my anti Stony Silence cards. You're right. Mm. 
this sequencing is wrong. I should have I should have cast this before playing my land for the turn because if this doesn't resolve, I want to play Inkmoth Nexus this turn. If this does resolve, obviously I'm playing Darksteel Citadel so I can Mox Opal into Walking Ballista. All right, if we get to untap with this Overseer, the game, the game ends, so. Their deck is like mono interaction, so I'd be pretty surprised if that happened. Wow, huh. Karn's actually not even very good here, right? I think, I think I just pass. Sure. Because I can activate both Inkmoth Nexus, activate Steel Overseer, get three get three tokens from animation module. And like steel overseer with animation module snowballs really quickly. Because, like, now, now the servos get counters, and I can pay to get stuff for those, too. Now they have they have blockers. Is Ravager lethal anyways? I can't deal eighteen, right? So this does two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think I think I can do 17. Let's count again. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, plus, plus the one. Yeah, I can, I can, I can literally, I'm one short of lethal because, because I can play, I can play Ravager here and then attack with five things they block four of them so i have to i have to attack with the nexus two so basically i i'm out of mana then so i'm one i'm one like if this was a land i could kill them so if i if i attack with all of these they just block all of them and then that's not profitable but like i could play this and then i could animate this and attack with five things and they block this this and two of these and then i only have 16 what if they have path push i'm i just i'm counting like they don't have path push i counted that chat so arcbound ravager is worth 2 2 4 6 7 8 or sorry 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 because one of these i can't sacrifice because that's the one that's dealing the damage so i'm not i'm not if i sacrifice everything i have but then i have nothing to put a counter on to 
So this is this is worth six. This is worth ten. This is worth fourteen. This is worth sixteen. So you're right. I have nine artifacts total, but that that's not relevant. I'm just gonna pass the turn here. Over overseer has to attack. They have they have four blockers, and so in order to have a lethal thing, I would have to connect with one of them. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't math out because I'm a mana short. So if I if I had one more land here, like if this Karn was a land or a box opal, I could have killed them there. Okay. I think I'm just hoping for no sweeper here. Possible I should have just pressured the Jace last turn. They have a lot of cards now. So like this turn, I get to activate Steel Overseer, make four more servos, and then like my existing servos will be threes, my Overseer will be a five. Yeah, I, I, like, like I said, I probably should have attacked the Jace. It would have it would have cleared out blockers this turn. Too. It would have cleared out blockers at the very least. Wow, they're not blowing the explosives up. They know about this Ravager, right? Ravager. Uh, Bueller. Do they have Cryptic Command? They might have Cryptic Command, I guess. Counter tap. I just like pump up and make friends here. Extra module? Extra module? I mean, the Ink Moths are kind of like really... Oh, you mean make them lethal through a sweeper? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. If I'd have, I should have kicked the Ink Moths up to five fives each that turn instead of making two more servos because that way if they cast like Supreme Verdict or Wrath of God here, like the Ink Moths just like fire up and tend them. Yeah, you're right, Tom. I assume they're blowing up engineered explosives right now. I 
Because if I would have if I would have made the Ink Moths five fives last turn, I could have attacked with them better this turn if they cryptic command me again, like if they've like snap cryptic. Sure, I'd love a land. We've actually, we've actually been a little bit strapped on mana so far this game. The E is on one. If there's no if there's no number next to the counter, it's one. They're bouncing their explosives and drawing a card. Okay. So if they block three fives and this, they take nine, 10, 11. I'm going to send the two ink moths at Jace, I think. So if they want to block both of these, they then take 5, 12, they take lethal. If they block one of these, they take 12, 30, 40. All right, so I'm going to send both of these here. Try and take the JSO off the table while pressuring them also. I guess I could send everything at them. And then... They have to block my tokens and the ink balls are lethal next turn. That's probably better, huh? It gives them another Jace activation... I'm just going to ship it at them. <laughs> they have been Jay storming, so like that opt that opt could have ended very poorly for us. All right, so they're taking they're going to four infect, or they're going to six infect. So are we pathing one of my? What? I, I, it's, I feel like my opponent's misclicking on things. All right, so now they're dead to either. They're dead to either Ink Moth hitting them next turn. Because they're at six infect, and animation module can add another counter to my opponent because it adds a counter to a player. I've made. Made a couple of pretty sizable mistakes this game. I can't see my opponent's cards, so I can't know for sure. But some of their some of their sequencing, at least from the public information, seems really strange. It seemed really strange. That's true. A slightly more conservative play is play second module and activate both. I didn't want to play out the other module this previous turn because they have engineered explosives in their hand. I want them to have to do that to my servos. 
Field of Rune. Field of Rune changes the dynamic. Field of Rune means I'm probably just double modul moduling them. Yeah, they're gone. Oh, that killing my Mox Opal means that I can't, uh, I can't double activate. Those are blockers as well. So I, I act, I'm actually at a point where I want to draw land. I'm going to fire this up, and I'm going to send Arcbound Worker at Jace and this at them. All right. Do they have a removal spell, or do they just miss the text on the animation module? They've been they've been brainstorming with Jace, so like they could just have a removal spell here and be getting me to use my mana. They're either they must. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the plan here is uh, pass double double activate module untap double activate module. So they're they're dead on my untap if I get to untap with both these these animation modules active. I, I was actually about to say, if they double fielded me, I also wouldn't be able to kill them here. Because I don't have two more. I only have one more basic in my deck. So, I made some slops in the early game. I think my opponent made a few slops in the late game there. And ultimately, I was able to capitalize on, on a couple of things. Obviously, like I said, like we're not looking at their hands. Like I can't know exactly like what they're doing with their J-Storms. Maybe they didn't have too many better lines of play. But like they definitely... like. Gave me a window to kill or chase they didn't need to give me and other things of that nature. Um, this deck's okay. I like this deck when I'm racing other people on linear things. I think it's I think it's got a powerful proactive game plan. Like there's a reason why this archetype frequently pops up in top eights. I am a fan of the Black Splash. I think both Thought Season and Assassin's Trophy allow you to have this extra interaction that's really nice. Um, in general, I'm not a huge fan of the post board games that this deck post board games that this deck gets into just because playing through things like Hercules Recall and Stony Silence gets kind of tiring for me personally but if you're someone that doesn't mind playing against those powerful sideboard cards I definitely think this is a very reasonable strategy to be implementing in modern uh, that's gonna be it for me for today folks we're almost almost at the 10 hour mark 9 hours 59 minutes and 15 seconds I'll be back uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m central standard time which is approximately 14 hours from now we're gonna do four four more magic online decks i'll be off wednesday and then thursday i shall be returning with a variety of uh new standard decks so get me your standard and modern decks as always if you'd like to submit a deck be sure to do so on my website if you didn't check out if you're one of my people who only watches during the week and you didn't see me go live yesterday i streamed uh, modern and legacy all day yesterday as well and you can find those videos on my website and my youtube channel now so catch you all later on later everybody everybody have a good one Grishel Brand should be up tomorrow. It'll definitely be towards the top of the queue, I promise. All right. Is anybody else streaming Moto that I can host? All 
Oh, day nine's on. Perfect. 